Hello, Sporklers. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a stupendous Sudoku quiz utilizing Sporkle's new grid format. With the launch of the new Saturday Sudoku feature, as well as numerous twists on the classic format, you might want to get involved and make some of your own. And this tutorial will serve as a guide to making traditional 9x9 Sudoku puzzles. But first, a quick overview if you've never played a Sudoku quiz before. Sudoku is a logic puzzle in which you must place numbers or sometimes letters into a grid. In a traditional puzzle, you must place the digits 1 through 9 into each row, each column, and into smaller 3x3 three three squares. Using the numbers that are automatically provided by the quiz, you must figure out what goes where in the time limit provided. Now that you've got an understanding of how to play Sudoku quizzes, let's get to creating. The first thing you're going to want to do before you create your quiz in Sporkle is to plan it out. Use a spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheets to figure out how your puzzle is going to work. You can go row by row or column by column, but me, I like to go square by square. Fill in each number exactly one time in your spreadsheet, in each row, each column, and each box, and make sure you do not overlap. Let's skip ahead a bit. And voila! we have a completed Sudoku grid. The next step is to copy the entire grid, paste it into a new sheet, and start deleting numbers. But don't delete the numbers randomly. Make sure that the puzzle is still solvable. I've already done this, so let's take a look. Using just these numbers, we can solve a Sudoku puzzle. If I were to show this to a random person and give them some time, they can figure it out. And that is the key, since it's all about logic. Now we can create our Sudoku quiz in Sporkle. We give it a name. We change the quiz type from classic to grid. And when the grid size pop-up comes up, we can change it from 12 by 12 to nine by nine. After filling out everything on the quiz edit page, it's important that we go over to the Options tab before we start entering data. You'll notice that there are two boxes checked off. We're going to want to de-check both of those. They're not necessary for Sudoku quizzes. Now that we've saved, we can head over to the Data tab. I've already entered the numbers for a completed Sudoku grid, but we want the player to have certain numbers available to them at the start so that they can solve it. So, what we need to do is we need to select the I button at the top of the screen. Once we've pressed that button, any number we click in the grid will reveal automatically at the start. I'm going to skip ahead to show you what it will look like at the end. Now we have a completed Sudoku grid. We can test the quiz by clicking the test quiz button, and you'll see that every given number has been grayed so that you know that it's been provided for you. However, we're not necessarily done yet. We can add thicker lines or splashes of color to make the quiz stand out a little bit more. To add lines, all you have to do is click the Draw Glyphs button, which is right next to the I button, and select the thick line that is next to the thin line. Simply click each spot on the grid that you would like to highlight, and voila, we have a larger square. We can also add a splash of color by simply clicking the paint button, selecting a background color, either using HTML or the sliders, and fill each cell individually. Within no time, you will have a colorful, well-displayed Sudoku quiz. And voila, now you have a beautiful Sudoku quiz ready for the world to enjoy. Pretty soon, you'll be a Sudoku making master. As always, thank you for watching. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have more suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see, leave them in the comments. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more trivia content. Happy sporkling!